how California's workforce is changing and why state policy has to change with it. That's the title of a new report from the nonpartisan research group California Budget and Policy Center. My guest, Peter Brownell, research director at the Center for Policy Initiative, highlights some of those labor changes in the impact on San Diego workers and their families. And Peter, the report finds that the California's workforce has is a lot more diverse now than it has been in the past few decades. How does our workforce as far as diversity go compared to that of the 1980s? Well, um, you know, as you mentioned, it's become more diverse in terms of racial and ethnic groups. Um, as a percentage of the workforce, the, the representation by Latinos has, has pretty much doubled in that period. Um, it's a period of time where the, the workforce has become minority uh, non-Latino whites. So there's, you know, there's been pretty, pretty significant changes over that time period. What kinds of challenges do workers of colors experience in today's labor market as opposed to uh, non-Latino or non-black workers? Well, one of the things that the report mentions is that over that period of time, uh, you know, inflation adjusted wages for both black and Latino workers have actually declined while they've grown for white workers. So, um, you know, both in terms of employment and wages, uh, you know, folks have really sort of struggled to remain attached to the labor market during the recession um, and to earn enough to support their families. And something else the, uh, the analysis looked at was more women are working today than they have since a surge into the workforce back in the 1970s. What effect is that having, having more women working and then working longer hours? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those are the trends. And one of the other things that the report really highlights is that, you know, you, we've reached a point where almost half of families with uh, children under five have both, well, have, have all adults in the household working. Um, so obviously that's, you know, there's huge implications for child care and access to affordable quality child care in preschools, um, you know, to, to uh, facilitate people to do that and to not have, you know, negative impacts on their kids. How does the labor force here in San Diego County compare to the rest of the state? Are we seeing uh, similar results? Yeah, we're seeing very similar changes in the demographics um, over the same period of time. There was a report uh, from USC that tracked very similar changes in the population here. And because our younger population is even more um, made up of the, the racial and ethnic groups, including Latinos and Asian Pacific Islanders, we expect that change to, to continue as those folks age into the labor force. Well, this report also looked at policies, right? Like changing policies and that they're not keeping up. What kind of policies need to be changed to address these uh, changing workforce issues, especially here in San Diego? Um, well, definitely in terms of the, you know, the, the wages and the ability of wages to keep up with, um, with inflation, one of the things that the two of the main policies that the report highlights are the need to, to continue to raise the minimum wage, um, even, with, um, even with the planned increases to $10 per hour, um, we're still uh, adjusted for inflation gonna be below where we were in terms of the earning, the, the purchasing power of minimum wage in 1968. Um, so so f folks have seen their earning power eroded away if they're earning minimum wage. Um, and that's obviously something that's, you know, that we've been debating here at the city mm -hmm. and will be um, at the city of San Diego and, and will be on the ballot in, in uh, the coming year. Um, the other thing that the report highlights is uh, earned income tax credit, which passed. Um, there's a new state policy, um, which is going to produce some very significant benefits for folks who are working um, but who have fairly low earnings. Sure, um, yeah, I was going to touch on that. Can you just briefly explain how that works? People get a, a, an income credit that's actually pretty sizable. Yeah, it's, so it's it's Basically, the eligibility is very similar to the federal earned income tax credit, um, but this is coming from the state. Um, it's a refundable credit, so um, so people you know people can get a, a people will get a, a tax return based on that credit if they qualify for it and don't owe additional taxes. Um, so it can put more money in their pockets. Um, the the thresholds are very low. So for instance, if you even if you were working full time year round as a minimum wage worker supporting three children, you still wouldn't qualify. But for folks, there are about two million people that will qualify um, because of their part time work and and their the needs of their dependents in the state here in, in state, California. Yes, yeah, so super Diego. low wage er earners. So we'll have to end on this. But what about middle income? Um, it seems like there's been a, a shrinking of middle income jobs. Is that true? Um, yeah, I mean, we've seen sort of declines at where the median uh, earnings are, and, and especially since the recession, uh, I can say in San Diego that median earnings, median household income, um, you know, declined during the recession and really have been stagnant since then. They haven't bounced back up the way the, the labor, or excuse me, the, the real estate market mm -hmm. and the financial markets have. So folks are really sort of stagnating uh, even at the, the median income.
um, in San Diego and, and as the report notes throughout the state. All right, something to follow up on that in the future. Peter Brownell, thank you so much. My pleasure.